Major issues confronting Texas residents right now as the winter weather has moved on. Pricey utility bills as the power grid was strained to its limit. Some people even report seeing charges on their electric bill for days where they didn't even have power. Most of the time our bills have never been over $100. Like right now I think we're up to $600 and other providers won't accept this until February 22nd. So on top of the gas issues, no power, the water being the way it is, all this other stuff going on, we're going to have a sky high electricity bill. Tonight, the Public Utility Commission of Texas held an emergency meeting and issued orders to suspend any utility disconnections because of non-payments until further notice. They also extended a pandemic era measure which required deferred payment plans when customers request them. Joining us now on News Nation to discuss the next steps for Texas as the state rebounds from that winter weather is Texas State Senator Brian Hughes. Senator Hughes represents Senate District 1, which is in the northeastern part of the state near the borders where Arkansas and Oklahoma meet. Senator, thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. Thank you for having me. All right, Senator, uh, how are things now? Obviously, the weather has broken. Winter weather not quite as severe as what you guys saw over the last few days. How is the situation in the region? Most folks have power back on. Water is being restored. There's still some boil notices. Uh, we're seeing Texas come together. We're seeing folks volunteer. We've seen it all week. And uh, this is a terrible situation, but it's brought out the best in folks in terms of helping folks get generators and firewood and water and checking on their neighbors and elderly shut in friends. So it's been a dreadful situation, but we're glad to say we're in much better shape today. President Biden issued a major disaster declaration clearing the way for more federal assistance. A, how much is that needed? And B, how are people going to get these funds in order to make an impact on what they actually do need? So a couple of things. We have 254 counties in Texas. Every single county has been affected in a severe way. We haven't had a storm like this for 150 years. We were disappointed to see the declaration granted for only 77 counties. We're not sure how those were picked, so we're going back to get some help with that. But as far as getting the money distributed, our Texas Emergency Management Department has been working on this with local governments, county and city. We have a good network in place to get people help when they need it. Not just volunteers, but also good state and local infrastructure to help in a situation like this. So we're glad that system is there when we need it. Senator, we have been talking about electricity in Texas for several days now as millions were without electricity, being tough to heat their homes, covering up with blankets. Now we're looking at really staggering electrical payments, these bills that are coming in. A, how does that happen? And, and, and how are people going to be able to pay for these things? Okay, there is a lot of blame to go around for what we experienced last week. We believe there was failure on the part of the power grid failure by regulators, failure by power companies. But I'll tell you who did not fail, who is not to blame, and that's those Texas families who were hunkered down, just trying to keep warm, just trying to survive. So you mentioned earlier in the story, we're taking steps to make sure those Texas families don't have to pay for somebody else's mistakes. So we're on this, this is a big deal. A lot of families have auto draft. They're gonna pay these automatically. Do you believe that any of these people who have, who have these very high electric bills will get any money back? I do, I do. And let's find out who did what. To the extent there was a failure by the government, by the power grid, by regulators, then the government should be responsible for that. If there's failure by power companies, let's hold them accountable. How perverse would it be for their negligence, for their malfeasance to make this situation worse and then benefit from it? We don't know that's happening, but that's what these hearings are for starting this week. We're going to find out who's responsible, and they'll be the ones paying the bills, not Texas consumers, not folks, families just trying to stay alive. That, that's not going to happen. All right, so that's the professional part of this interview. Personally, Senator, seeing the images that we're showing on our screen right now of people filling up their toilet with snow water, of ceilings collapsing, how difficult has it been on a personal level to see your fellow Texans having to endure something like this? Frustration, helplessness. Mm -hmm. So been on the phone a lot. We've been talking to folks and emailing folks. And again, we're trying to meet supplies with needs. So getting folks generators and firewood and bottled water. We're so thankful for private sector friends like Brookshire Grocery Company giving free breakfast and now free water to folks who need it. And that's been the best part of this. Folks have come together to help each other out, to check on each other. But for my part, I've been in Texas this whole time and I've experienced this. It's been terribly frustrating. This can never, ever happen again. 
State Senator Brian Hughes out of Texas. Senator, thank you. Thank you for having me.